This episode is brought to you by Littlefoot Coffee. If you're hearing this, you have successfully found a USB device carrying the latest episode of Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul. We hope you're one of the good guys. Enjoy the show. again and welcome to Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul, the cooking show for survivors and thrivers. Yes, these nutrient-dense recipes are achievable in today's modern, bustling, some might say panicked and post-apocalyptic world. Listeners, change is perhaps the only true constant that life offers. We who have lived through this nuclear, missile-infused year know this all too well. Like a sputtering flame that has not succumbed to ember, so too does our remaining civilization fight for oxygen, frantically dancing for survival. These drastic transformations are as grim as they are inevitable. But my favorite kind of change takes place in the kitchen with the help of my trusty one-quart saucepan. I'm honored you've chosen to experience this particular change with me. I'm your host, Elaine Martinez. Let's get cooking. Oops, folks, I don't know if you can hear the siren going off in the background, but please rest assured that it is simply a drill of some kind. The real duck and cover alarm hits at a low D flat that is just... like that. Uh, Luckily, here at the LA Dental Clinic, we have some measures in place to protect ourselves in the case of a nuclear event. They certainly helped me get through the first one. I think I'll just gather up my equipment... Here we go. Arms are very full, but I think I can make it in one trip. Oops. Drop my one-quart saucepan. And let's retreat back to the tech lab. Brian, over here. Is anyone there? I think I see someone moving. Hey, you've got a lot of sin. Just a moment, listeners. Hi, can I help? Oh! Excuse me? Oh my god, please, you should be excusing us. This is like the tenth place we've tried. Thank you, thank you. You are for real our hero. Sydney and I were just practicing tennis at the park and saw the missile zip over Runyon Canyon. Yeah, I just delivered a killer return. And then the sky just went from its usual gunmetal gray to... What would you call it, Fran? Thick yellow. Mm, right, thick yellow. And then the alarm started. Oh my. Here, put these on. Bulletproof vest? You think that's, like, necessary? They're radiation vests. Dental technicians use them whenever people get x-rays. Oh, nice. You got a safe room, Doc? Grab some of this cooking stuff and follow me. Sorry for the interruption, listeners. It looks as though both me and my new young friends have had some good fortune in finding one another. I had not been able to book a guest due to the most recent 24-hour curfew in place, and these two happen to need shelter while this pesky nuclear event unfolds. Twice in one year. So inconvenient. Anyway, we're here with Sydney and Fran, who are tossing around a couple of tennis balls. Fran, stop pouncing. Hi, Sydney here. Fran and I host our own podcast, actually. It's called We're Not Dating. Because everyone assumes we are. And we're totally not. Fran is like my best friend. (laughs) Yeah, that's what they've said many times and why I wanted to do the podcast so bad. For like, irony. We're not dating, guys. (laughs) No, we're not. Lol, right? Well, that's great. Friendship is probably among our most valuable resources these days after food and water. Uh, Speaking of which, you guys said you'd be willing to help me out today with a recipe I've been working on. Crossover episode! Just to paint our listeners a little picture, we are situated in the tech lab slash break room here at the L.A. Dental Clinic. It's a little cramped back here. Sydney and Fran are sitting snugly on the narrow counter to the right of the hand-washing sink here, heads slightly tilted to fit under the cabinet that holds a couple of chip mugs, an open bag of sugar-free mints, and a jar full of left-behind tongue rings we've had to ask people to take out before they go through the x-ray machine. 
Nice. What? Mince rule. I'm perched on a stool with my laptop perched on me, and between us is a three-foot-high stainless steel cart usually used for transporting dental equipment around the office, which I've uh, just now cleared and revamped to help us with our cooking. It is now complete with critical cooking utensils like bowls and spatulas and topped with our trusty hot plate. Phew, that was a lot of exposition. Don't forget to mention this model of a set of teeth. I think it likes you, Sid. (laughs) I'm closer to dating these fake chompers than I am to dating Fran. (laughs) You're so funny, Sydney. Like, you'd even date me if I asked. Boy, it's very um, hot in here, especially with all this gear on. I suppose it may seem like overkill, but these heavy vests, plus the rubber gloves pulled over our scalps, may save us from some severe radiation exposure. Or maybe they won't. Who really knows? I like it. Maybe this will be my prom look. Would you go with me if I looked like this, Sydney? Oh my gosh, can you imagine if we went together? Yeah. People would probably be like, we knew you were dating. You guys do really seem to get along and enjoy one another. I'm so glad you get it, Elaine. Everyone is like so weird about our perfectly platonic friendship. They're always so dumb saying we're totally perfect together or whatever stupid. Well, as long as you guys are on the same page. Listen, we've taken a little extra time with the side chatter this time around, which has been admittedly refreshing after all the isolation. But if you're up for it, I'd love to keep workshopping this recipe. It's a hot and spicy black bean burger. That's perfect because Fran is hot. And Sydney's spicy. And I guess that makes me the burger. I'm so glad to have company as the worst of the radiation passes. Last time I didn't see anyone for six days. Yeah, at least we're here with each other. Aww. Oh, you meant Sydney. And you, too. Yeah, I totally meant you as well. It's Elaine, right? That's right. Now, Sydney, Fran, will you do the honors of reading off the ingredients I've arranged here on the second shelf of this novel cooking cart? We've got one can of refried black beans. And then we have one packet of taco seasoning, question mark? We're doing burgers, though, right? The seasoning packet is just a fast and easy way to achieve a certain flavor. Otherwise, I'd concoct a more curated mix of chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, oregano, cayenne, and salt and pepper. As it is, the taco seasoning packet is serviceable. I get it. It's like looking at something you've seen all your life in a completely different way. Exactly, Fran. A jar of minced garlic, a can of chipotle and adobo. Anything else? Um, I also see some flour. Is that part of this? I can't be a part of any bread-making activities. They brought in my pop last week, and he hasn't been the same since. Well, that's because he's, you know... Dead, sure. Like I said, he really hasn't been the same. Mind you, he was baking bread, so law enforcement officers had no choice. Oh my, should we, um, unpack that? Oh, we're saving it for our own podcast. Tune in next week on We're Not Dating, Sad Edition. Sydney's right. Our audience is prepared for that kind of heavy stuff, and anyway, I'm not quite ready to open that can of worms. Speaking of which, do you have a can opener? I sure do. It's right here. Listeners, now that we know our ingredients and are about to go on a can opening spree, maybe it's a good time for a little break. When we return, we'll create this high-protein veggie burger with my hip new friends, Sydney and Fran. We're We're not not dating, dating, guys! (laughs) (laughs) this episode is sponsored by littlefoot coffee littlefoot coffee roasts responsibly sourced beans from all over the world and even curates blends based on the season's offerings right now they have one called winter's monster that features latin american coffees listen coffee has never been more important and right now there has never been a better deal in getting coffees delivered straight to your door your bunker or even your dental office you can sign up for a weekly or monthly subscription that will make sure you never have to face the day without a cup of coffee what would even be the point just thinking about it anyway beyond the fact that getting a subscription means that littlefoot will cover shipping 
These guys are also offering a 20% discount for the first month when you use promo code SOUL. You can use promo code SOUL to get yourself or a loved one a Littlefoot Holiday Trio gift box, which has three four ounce precious little bags of coffee, including the Winter's Monster Blend. Go find Littlefoot on Instagram and online and browse their selection. And don't forget, use promo code SOUL, S O U L, at checkout. Water shortage got you down? Is your husband constantly coming home thirsty? Kids antsy from another school day canceled? Sounds like you could use a bucket. A bucket is a handy device that can store up to five gallons of loose water that you can use any time. Simply fill the bucket from whatever source you have, whether that be from the tap on a good day or from the toilet tank on one of those drear ones, and enjoy. Bucket can even provide hours of entertainment for your little ones when empty. Don't forget, water must be boiled for five minutes or sit with four halazone tablets per gallon for an hour before consumption. Bucket can be used to transport snow and ice indoors for the lucky folks up north or to transport water home on ration distribution day for the rest of us. Buckets can be found behind warehouses, at the Home Depot locations that have not been burnt to the ground, and in almost abandoned public schools janitor closet. Just walk right in and Bucket can be yours. Go get Bucket. Bucket is to be used with adult supervision, water not included. Okay, I'm here at the front door looking out upon the evening sky. The sirens have stopped, but they've started blasting some kind of off-brand version of Joni Mitchell's big yellow taxi instead, so I think that's like a code black. Anyway, I tend to prefer the Counting Crows version, so it seems pretty bleak out there to me. The sky is reminiscent of a half-healed bruise, and even as the sun sets, I can see that the wind is carrying the toxic mass northerly, away from us. I feel a little bad for Sydney and Fran. Being young is tough as it is, nuclear holocaust notwithstanding. I'm glad they have their friendship to carry them through, though I suspect that they maybe both have feelings for each other. Elaine, Fran is bored. Get back in here so we can keep podcasting. Oh, welcome back to Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul. Coming! I mean it. Your teeth are so straight and perfect, you could be a tooth model. Right, Elaine? Well, I'd have to do a full exam to determine the presence of any cavities or flaws in the enamel and probably create a plaster mold of a dental impression to study the full jaw and bite patterns for good measure, but... At a glance, I'd say Fran has taken adequate care of their teeth. Fran is so humble. That's why we love him. (laughs) You do not. Shut up. I suppose we should jump back into this hot and spicy black bean burger recipe. What we're doing here is just making up some simple patties with a few simple and mostly non-perishable ingredients. As a refresher, they include one can of refried black beans, a bit of minced garlic, half a packet of taco seasoning, a couple of chipotle peppers, and some flour. It's a one-pot kind of deal, so I'm just going to grab this big mixing bowl and rubber spatula. Holy Sydney? Got it. And if Fran has the refried black beans ready? Check out this serve. Boom. And Sydney, can you pour in just the taco seasoning? Perfect. And now a teaspoon of the minced garlic, an optional add-in. Done and done. And Fran, I see you've cracked open the can of chipotle in adobo. Now, this recipe says hot and spicy in the title, so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and pick out two whole peppers, rip off the stem, and throw the rest in the bean mixture. So slimy. Okay, stems are off. Now you just mix it up. Really mash and smash that pepper. Smash, 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 smash. Smash. Is that mixed enough, you think? I certainly hope so. Now we just need to add flour to make these into patties. Mmm, that's good. Hey, Fran, try this. Yum. That is totally hot. (gasps) Fran. I mean spicy hot, nerd. (laughs) You're the nerd. You guys are too cute. Elaine, I have to pee. Come with. Oh, 
I mean, we're almost done with the recipe, and also you're a miner, and also I think that's weird in a general sort of way. Also, why me and not Fran? Sydney knows my pee schedule. Come on, Elaine. I just need you to show me where it is. All right, we're just going to glide right over that pee schedule thing. Come on, Sydney. Restroom is over to the left of the reception desk. Elaine, confession time. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm totally in love with Fran. Is it obvious? Well... Shut up, you're supposed to say no. No? I mean, I hope it's a little obvious. I've been trying to work up the nerve to ask them out for months. It's the whole reason I joined the tennis team. I mean... I'm also mad skilled at tennis because I've been playing in clubs practically my entire life. But Fran was the reason that I started playing for the school team, which otherwise sucks. For what it's worth, I think Fran seems very fond of you. So you think I should go for it? Well, as long as... Okay. Okay. Fine. I'm going to do it. All right. Are you going to use the restroom before we go back, or... That was just a ruse to talk to you alone. Jeez, Elaine, haven't you ever seen a high school rom-com? Let's go back before I lose my nerve. Fran? Yes? I have something I need to ask you. No, I mean, yes. Yes, I'll go out with you. What? Um, that little Bluetooth mic is still on, and this program is transcribing straight to the laptop here, so I kind of read everything you were saying. Sydney, I only stick with tennis because you're on the team. You're pretty much the weirdest person ever and you make me laugh every single day, even in school during the mandatory 30 minutes of silent ad clicking. I'll just take this bean mixture here and start adding in some flour. Wow, Fran, I think you're pretty much the weirdest person ever too. You know everything about everything. And you've got this smile that starts off so small and then all of a sudden bursts across your face. And whenever I say something stupid and you smile like that, it makes me feel like I just made the perfect serve. Like like an ace. Like a perfect ace. Your ace, my love. I feel like there are a couple of tennis metaphors going over my head here. Looks like I need a little more flour. But Fran, you've always made it seem like you thought of me as a friend. The podcast. I only suggested the idea for our podcast as a joke. On myself, I guess. Because the truth is, I've always wanted to date you. Almost done. Time to shape this mixture into patties. Wow. So are we, like, a thing now? You guys are totally dating. Cool. Cool. Yes, very cool. I hate to make this all about me and my podcast, but what do you say we wrap this recipe up really quickly? Yes! Oh, we're making burger patties! Oh, wait, when did these patties get made? During your heart-to-heart, I just added in a flour, a cup more or less, uh, until the bean mixture stopped sticking to my fingers and then shaped them up. We are ready to give them some heat. Just need a bit of oil to heat up in this one-quart saucepan here. Whoa, what did you call this thing? A hot plate. Essentially a mini portable stovetop. Very handy in these circumstances where electric power is not a given. Is this allowed? Well, now you mention it, um, it's not recommended indoors and especially not for closed quarters such as this. Let's open the door for just this part, just for a minute. I think what Sid meant was, is this legal? What do you mean? According to the Provisional State Chapter 96, Addendum A Sub 1, heat sources directed in such a way as to incite chemical or physical changes to any matter are not permitted under any circumstances except by select officials of the Provisional State and State Approved Television Personalities. But that would include not only bread making, but cooking in general. Fran should know, they always get top marks in civil obedience. Well, when your crush's dad runs the Provisional Government, you want to be prepared. Aw, Fran. Sydney's dad is... Wait, but that would mean that your father's work resulted in Fran's father's... I know, right? We're like a modern-day Romeo and Juliet. I mean, it feels a little darker than even that, somehow, but I guess I'll leave that to you to figure out. 
What do you say we push through real fast here? We've got a bit of oil heating up at the bottom of this one quart saucepan and the patties are ready to go. These just need to cook for about three minutes on each side. Hey, I think that song stopped playing. Shh. You're right. It's quiet out there. We ought to hustle, Fran. No, no. Keep the x-ray vest on for your run home. I've got more. Elaine, you're the best. Hurry, Fran. Be sure to tune in to We're Not Dating next Wednesday. Thanks for everything, Elaine. Be safe, you two. Race ya! Not if I race you first! Listeners, we are not stagnant creatures. Our entire existence is change. Cooking is a tangible experience of that fact. Tasting, adjusting, learning, rationing, combining, assembling, perfecting. Every dish is a beautiful transformation. An example of how much we can alter and be altered in just a handful of minutes. We must remember that we are not only capable of enduring such change, but capable of embracing it fully. We are different now. We are not just friends. We are dating. We are not just a taco seasoning packet. We are useful for many things, anything really. Sometimes change requires risk. Sometimes we must be bold. I hope you'll embrace what changes come your way and tune in next week. This has been Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul. I'm Elaine Martinez, not crying, hugging you. Good night. This episode of Elaine's Cooking for the Soul was written and directed by Allison Slice and produced by Mackenzie Mazell. This show was brought to you by The Period Network. Story by Allison Sliceman. Elaine Martinez was voiced by Rosa Delgado, whom you can follow on Instagram and Twitter at Rosa D. That's R O H Z A H. D-E-E. The part of Sydney was played by Julie Willett, whom you can follow on Instagram at official Julie O. The role of Fran was played by Sox Whitmore, whom you can learn more about at SoxWhitmore.com. The Courier Bravely Transporting Elaine's Episodes was voiced by Rachel Wong. Theme music is by Uri Avi. Logo design by Gucci. Special thanks to Jason Smith, and the Boyle Heights Arts Conservatory. You can follow Elaine on Twitter at Elaine's Cooking or on Instagram at Elaine's Cooking. You can email us at Elaine Martinez DDS at LADentalCare.org. That's E L A I N E S. Well, just rewind 15 seconds if you need to hear all that again. Every recipe we use is achievable with a can do attitude, a stovetop, and approval from the interim government. We'd love to hear your apocalyptic recipe ideas and see your attempts at what we cooked up this week. Remember, boil your water and never give up. Until next time! You made it to the end of the file. That's good news. Every time this is played, we risk exposure. Kindly pass this USB along to someone you trust or return to the pre-established drop-off location. Remember, we need Elaine and it's up to us to protect her. So keep listening, keep living, and find us next week. This episode is sponsored by Littlefoot Coffee. Go find Littlefoot on Instagram and online.